Good evening everyone. First of all, thanks for inviting us here today. Both of us are really excited. Uh, it's a pleasure for us to be here in this event today. My name is Kyriakos Fistos. And I'm Heide Altai and we're from the NLS team within SAS. And today we're just going to give you a brief intro. So the agenda will as follow, uh, we'll pretty much mention who SAS are. Uh, a definition of AI, or at least our definition of an AI, looking at some of the current use cases, so some of the stuff that we are doing today, and then our predictions for the future in AI. Hopefully you have heard about SaaS. For those you haven't, SaaS is the leader in the market of advanced analytics through innovative software and services. Uh, we are trying to help organizations all around the world to making data-driven decisions. Some interesting facts about SaaS that I think show our culture is, uh, first of all, that SaaS has been profitable since 1976, uh, since uh, uh, the day that it was founded, uh, and moreover, uh, has a continuous growth during these years. I think that this fact can highlight the consistency, the recognition, and also uh, the stability of our company. Another fact, how can you, let me ask you a question first, how can you keep being innovative for 42 years in this competitive market? Our answer is by a huge investment in R&D. SaaS, as a private software company, has invest heavily in R&D department almost 26% of our revenue goes there compared to 13% uh, in uh, uh, industry average. And we do that every year. We, we heavily reinvest in R&D every year as we want to deliver the best possible solutions to our customers' toughest business problems. I am... Um, to, to our customers' uh, toughest business problems, and not more, and not only that, because with, uh, we work in SaaS also with government, with non-profit organizations. We operate almost in 150 countries all over the world and trying to gain insights from data, trying to transform data into intelligence for our customers. So let's talk right now a little bit for AI, let's give a brief introduction about AI. All right, so we're talking about AI, so I think the best place is to really give a definition of AI because everyone almost has their definition of what they think AI is. So for us, it's pretty much the science of training a system to really allow them to automate and learn from their own decisions. So this would mean learning from the experience that it's, uh, it's already done, adapting to new uh, variables and pretty much do some sort of human tasks without any interactions with them. But the concept of AI, even though it is, you've heard it all before and it is something that is really blooming now, AI isn't a new concept. It's been around since the 1950s and it's continued de to develop with machine learning, deep learning and cognitive, uh, cognitive computing. But why would you think, why, why would AI be such a big thing right now? Uh, a big part of it is because, like you can see, there's a lot more data available than ever. Uh, there was an estimate that 80% of all the data in history has been produced in the last two years. Uh, and also we have a lot more computing power. So combining the data sizes and the computing power, uh, AI is what it is today. And I think Gartner estimated it, uh, AI to have a, value, a current value of 1.2 trillion, uh, with it rising to 3.9 trillion in 2022. And the idea is it's not that it's just a big number, it's also the fact that it's going to nearly treble in the next four years. So the, the amount of data is increasing, the computer power is increasing, and of course, um, the value is increasing. Yeah, and as Haidar said, AI has been around many decades, it's widely used in multiple industries, and moreover, I think that it's getting bigger uh, in the future. Orale, sur uh, Orale, a survey from Orale Media uh, said that 61% of organizations picked uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence as the best initiative for 2019. 
And I think that this highlights how important it is for organizations nowadays. Let's move on and uh, see some use cases. Uh, how uh, can we uh, leverage AI capabilities? I would like to share with you a, a story from Nationwide. We work with Nationwide. Uh, we Basically, they wanted to uh, uh, identify the reasons that customers get in touch in the contact center. So uh, our analyst team uh, identified the root cause of each query, also uh, if the query was resolved or not, and how many mails were exchanged in this process. Also, by doing sentiment analysis, we found the mood of customer. For example, uh, unsurprisingly, we discovered that uh, as, uh, as the customer mood worsen as the number of mails rises. And the most amazing part of this story, I think that was the results. Almost half of the emails that Nationwide received in uh, uh, via the online uh, banking platform that has, uh, more than a half uh, mails could be avoided entirely. And future plans are also to incorporate into the analysis unstructured data like voice uh, voice data in order to uh, from uh, the telephone calls uh, that uh, are in the contact center in order to build on their understanding receiving these emails also for this channel and now one of the other use cases that we're working on is something outside of banking we worked with shop direct who are uh, in charge of uh, websites such as Littlewood and Very.co.uk. Uh, for those who don't know, it is the second biggest online retailer in the UK after, of course, Amazon. And the idea is to really have personalized sortation, uh, like a personalized sort order for the customers. So Very was sitting on top of 40 years of customer data without really doing anything. And the idea was to try to sort it properly for the customers that were available. So for example, since most of their customers are online users, 99% of customers probably when they look up something, they wouldn't swipe more than three times. So to have it on top of the search is really <coughs> something that will um, have a lot of increase in sales. So I think they were doing a few of the tests with jeans and they were looking at the time of days that you log in, uh, your search history, uh, some of the brands you're looking at, and they found up to 50% increases in segmentation. Uh, but something that is quite interesting that came after this is also working with Chef Direct, we were able to give them a specific credit score. Um, so very.co.uk are actually one of the biggest non-banking lenders. So they have a real policy of uh, buy now, pay later, so forth. But in order to do that, you obviously need a real good, uh, you need to have a credit score to minimize that risk. And it is quite interesting to see how a lot of that is processed in real time, where the real AI now sits. So depending on the different things that you shop, you can get a result. So for example, um, if you put a lipstick on for three pounds, you change it into a 27 pound lipstick, which is almost the same, they'll probably give you a bad credit score because you seem like a bit of an unreliable person. Similarly, if you actually had a 27 pound one and you change it up to a three pounds one, uh, you'll get a positive credit score. And other factors also include the type of device you're, uh, device you're logging in. I think it, you need probably 500 pounds to get your credit approved and uh, 500 <coughs> points. Uh, and if you use an iPhone, you get 50 points, and Android 20, an LG 10, everything else you actually get minus points. So it's quite nice to see how all of that is incorporated. Uh, it's using customer data from previous orders, but it also, of course, looks at assumptions for new customers. Yeah, and let's also examine a little bit the future of AI. Uh, some, uh, how can we uh, uh, make AI even more useful for the organizations? Let's talk first of all about chatbots. Chatbots are not something new. All of us we know that uh, our artificial intelligence automated chat uh, systems which simulate human chats without any human interventions. Chatbots are extensively used to revo revolutionize uh, customer relations management at the personal level. 
So uh, it's obvious that uh, they have great benefits, operational efficiency, availability, generally they save time and money. But I think from a futuristic perspective, uh, we have to, uh, to work on how can we make uh, chatbots even smarter, even to give even smarter responses. I would like to share an example of, I, I, probably you have heard about that, from Bank of America that uh, has a virtual assistant called Erica and uh, uh, use AI to make suggestions over mobile phones for uh, checking balances, for uh, giving alerts about your pay bills and also uh, answer many bank related questions. But we, we want to make chatbots even smarter, maybe by giving some financial advice to, to the customers. And we strongly believe that uh, in the future, chatbots will be in the first line of uh, customer uh, service. Uh, one of the other things where we see a real sort of movement in AI is uh, Sasa currently working with a bank in America. Uh, where they look at ATM verification, so you'd walk up to an ATM, it would look at your face recognition and you can log into your device straight away. Um, and this can probably be further expanded so, uh, so that in the fact that you can actually walk into a branch, they would do rec uh, image recognition and by the time that you're walking by the till, they would already know who you are and you'll ha you have your service as well. Um, and of course, using some sort of a image recognition could also be really good for fraud. And when I say image recognition, I would probably like to extend it to voice recognition and maybe fingerprint recognition, which is obviously something that smartphones are currently doing. But just to try to expand on that and make that software a lot smarter can be one of the first lines uh, with fraud. Um, and also, just to, to, add, uh, to add on that, uh, we also have really smart computer vision machines which can actually detect your happiness, your mood, your angerness. And that can also be one of the first lines of uh, defense and fraud, if you look suspicious almost. And having some software to look at that facial recognition can help with that. Similarly, when you walk into a branch, that facial recognition, it could be beneficial to the person dealing with you to see what your mood is like. And finally, one of the things that we are looking at the future of, of AI and banking is looking at some of the recommendation engines. So this is very, very similar to the example I mentioned with ShopDirect. ShopDirect had 40 years of data and they were able to, from their personal store, and they were able to really try to advance and make some segment profits of, or increasing sales of 50%. And that's just from the transaction that were done there. But if you look at banks, they have your transactions for everything, essentially. Uh, so they can really try to look at those recommendation engines and provide credit card plans, possible cashbacks to some sort of support. If they link it with the GPS, you could walk in front of a store, get a notification on your phone, uh, offering a, a potential discount from a place that you're regularly shopping at. Uh, so just try to incorporate those recommendation engines within the banks could be one of the uh, great places where we can advance. I think if we look at this sort of uh, future of AI list, none of these are really new concepts. But, and that's probably in line with what my prediction, or I think our prediction is for uh, banking in the next 12 to 24 months. It's probably not going to be any sort of revolution, but rather evolution. So it will be the same things that we have, chat box, image recognition, recommendation engines, but just a lot smarter. Banks are probably a bit behind on the AI space compared to some of the other uh, segments that are out there. Many reasons for that, partly the 2008 financial crisis, restricted regulations, probably didn't allow all of that to move as quickly as some wanted. And there is still an element of risk in AI. It isn't the finished product. Uh, so, if, I mean, if we look at one of the examples when Tesla used their self-drive cars and uh, unfortunately one of the fatal uh, accidents happened, it is something that you can see it is not the finished product and a shareholder might not necessarily approve something that they're not sure about. I think that's all from us. Uh, we try to give you a, a brief overview about AI, how it is used uh, specifically in banking sector and predict some future trends. Uh, feel free to ask us any questions, we will be around and if you are interested for learning more you can visit our website sas.com AI. You can find there interesting stories, articles and demonstrations of uh, AI applications. Thank you very much. Thank you guys.